Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into the latest threat snapshot. So today we're going to be covering a vulnerability in Apache ActiveMQ. This is being tracked as CVE 2023-46604. And as I said, it's affecting their popular open source message queuing service. So Apache ActiveMQ is used by a lot of applications and services. Again, as a message queue or message broker, it allows them to exchange data between each other. And oftentimes it's misconfigured and left open online. And this is kind of creating the perfect storm for this vulnerability because again, it's very easy, very trivial, doesn't require any authentication, just needs to have network access to the broker. So it's very high impact. Um, Huntress has seen this exploited as a zero day. Um, and this has been um, picked up by a lot of different, um, you know, ransomware groups and threat actors, again, just because of the prevalence here. So um, we can see some examples here. This was um, earlier in November. Um, Huntress was seeing evidence of this back in October. Uh, Hello Kitty ransomware is exploiting ActiveMQ. Uh, we have a trend micro post from earlier this week. Um, talking about how it's being used to infect systems with crypto miners, rootkits. Um, and again, this is just a very trivial exploit. So to actually go over to the Apache ActiveMQ site, they have some details on the CVE. Um, again, it is affecting anything that is running ActiveMQ. Um, and really, it's part of the Java OpenWire client. Um, as well. And you can see a little bit here about the technical underpinnings of what's going on. Um, again, you really just need network access and to be able to manipulate a command. I'll even show you kind of an example payload here, just how trivial this is. So uh, we just need to send this XML across the wire. You can see we're, you know, creating a, a process builder bean, CMD, you know, command PowerShell. Um, you could have the same Linux equivalent here if you were targeting a Linux system. It's it's really that easy. So let's pivot over to Snap Attack. Let's talk through this. So if you came into Snap Attack, you search for the CVE, you would land on uh, this vulnerability page tracking this. Um, you can see this is a perfect 10 here. You know, when this was published, last updated. This is in our threat profile, and this was automatically added into our threat profile as a highest priority because of some of the exploitation characteristics. Again, it being exploited in the wild, it being a high severity item. Um, we can also see here, I don't have a, a snap score for this, so I am not protected, but we do have some recommendations. So if I deployed you know, recommended detections, ran our hunts, um, we would be able to be better defended against this threat. You can definitely continue to research and learn more about this. Again, all this information is provided from our partner Mandiant. And again, in true snap attack fashion, let's dig into what these threats actually look like. Um, so we've got two versions here. One of them is running on Windows, one of them is running on Linux. Um, they're gonna look a lot alike. Um, under the hood, what we just have is Apache ActiveMQ running on one of these servers. Um, oftentimes you're gonna see this on the internet right now, and this is why this is such an easy to exploit thing. Um, if I hop back a little bit in the video, not a lot to see here. We just started up the ActiveMQ client. Um, I'm going to go over to our Linux attacker host. There are several POCs available at this point. Um, again, I just have to give it the IP. And again, I'm passing that XML payload that it's going to hit. It's going to send that request. You're going to see it do that little PowerShell thing to download. And we have execution. Um, so again, pretty trivial here. You know, we talk about these zero day vulnerabilities and it's like, oh gosh, how would I ever protect and, and notice this sort of thing in my network? And again, time and time again, we start looking at these, you know, process graphs. And again, you've got this, you know, wrapper.exe for ActiveMQ, spawning Java, spawning CMD, spawning PowerShell. Uh, these paths start to look a lot alike. So again, if you have some really good um, tried and true evergreen detections, looking at process behaviors, looking at, you know, rare spawns of Java and looking for weird parent processes of PowerShell and CMDs, you're going to find these things time and time again. Similar story here on the Linux side. Again, we'll just touch on this very quickly. I'll even just look at this from the attacker side. Again, we have that ActiveMQ RCE passing the payload. Again, for the Linux version, we're not going to be probably running PowerShell, but running something else. Um, you can see it's going to download this uh, ELF file, run it. You know, I'm running as root, so you know, even better. Um, so bonus. So 
again, trivial, similar process graph thing. So how do I detect this? How do I hunt for this in my environment? A um, couple of good detections here that you can use. We'll talk about some of the more, you know, evergreen generic ones first. So looking for, again, on, on the Windows side, suspicious PowerShell invoke rep requests. Um, we've seen a lot of access with direct IP addresses, so this one would work. You would even see here, you know, PowerShell invoke web request with that IP downloading that test, you know, binary and then executing that. So this is a, you know, very simple kind of download execute cradle. And that would be, a, a again, a good detection to have in your arsenal. Could also look for, again, you know, looking for things spawned by java.exe, you know, very common here with a lot of these, you know, zero days or, you know, any sort of even web shell for that matter. Um, we talk about, you know, Java or, you know, whatever that server is, spawning CMDs and PowerShells. Uh, again, good example here. If you wanted to be a little bit more targeted, again, scoping this to Apache ActiveMQ, we do have some detections for those. Again, what we're going to do at that point is really kind of scope this down to say, what is that parent process name directory? Find that in the attack or, or um, ActiveMQ and still looking for the, the CMDs or PowerShells. Very similar detection on the Linux side as well. Again, we can look for Dash or BinSH, ActiveMQ, and again, we're spawning that, um, you know, BinSH downloading, uh, running curl in this case to download, execute, and run that command. So that's a quick wrap up, wrap up for this vulnerability. Um, hope you enjoyed this threat snapshot. It is a, you know, weekly series. So like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.